All right, and welcome to another mini lesson about propositional logic. Um, in this video, we'll finish up with the semantics of all of our um, different sorts of well-formed formulas and propositional logic by covering the conditional and the biconditional, which are the arrow symbols. All right, so our first symbol that we're going to talk about is the one directional arrow, the arrow pointing to the right, um, which we call the conditional symbol. Um, uh, when we read out a statement like this, which remember our syntax um, for propositional logic requires that you take two well-formed formulas and combine them using a conditional symbol and put that in parentheses, right? So that's how you make a well-formed formula using the conditional symbol. Um, this means uh, we would read this out loud as if P then Q. Now this is a little bit misleading um, because if thens have a lot of sort of funky implications to them in in natural language that this statement does not have. So we're going to focus on the truth table for this um, for this operator rather than on what it sounds like and then I'll explain here why it's not exactly what it sounds like. All right. So here's the truth table. Um, uh, and and what this requires is that anytime this is true, then this has to be true. That's the only requirement. Um, that this makes, that if this is true, this has to be true. So the first one is true, the second one has to be true. It doesn't make any requirements about um, what happens when the first one is false, um, and so it's always true if the first statement is false, right? It doesn't care if the second statement is true or false. So um, if, if P is true and Q is true, then uh, if P then Q is true. If P is true and Q is false, that's the only case where the conditional can be false, right? The only case is if true and false. Um, this is These ones are assigned true um, because it's vacuously true. True, right? It, it means that this doesn't, you know, since this is false, then it doesn't matter what this is, right? Because the only thing that the conditional cares about is when you have a circumstance where P is true, then Q must always be true, right? Um, uh, so for example, if we look at this sentence, um, if it's raining, then Lisa has her umbrella. It's very clear that um, this means that if it's raining uh, is true, then Lisa has her umbrella has to be true. Um, if it's not raining, um, or if it if it's raining um, and Lisa doesn't have her umbrella, then the whole statement is false, right? So that's very clear um, in, 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 uh, in natural language. So if it's raining, then Lisa has her umbrella. We know it's raining. Um, Lisa has to have her umbrella for the whole statement to be true. Um, if somebody tells you, if it's raining, then Lisa has her umbrella, and it's not currently raining, then Lisa might have an umbrella and the statement might still be true, or Lisa might not have her umbrella and the statement could still be true, right? So we assume that the statement is true if, um, if all that we know is that it's not raining and, you know, then we don't care about the second one, right? So this is not intuitive, right? So usually you would assume in, in um, standard, in, in natural language, that if it's raining, Lisa has her umbrella means um, if, it's, if, if Lisa has her umbrella, it must be raining, for example, right? But that's not the case here. All that we care about is this one means this one, right? That's the only thing we care about. So um, be careful, even though you do read this as if P then Q, it's not exactly um, the case. Uh, uh, that's not exactly what, how you want to think about it. Think about it as the truth table, right? So memorize this truth table and that's your conditional. Um, don't think about if P then Q. So you can sort of get away with it with and and or, but you can't get away with it with if then. All right. And our last operator is the double arrow, right? The arrow that points both directions. This is called a biconditional, which is not surprising because you have two conditionals. Um, uh, this means uh, we would read this statement as P if and only if Q. That's how we read it out loud. Um, and you want to think of this as a conditional that works both directions, right? So if we go back up to our table for the conditional, 
right? Um, this one's only true if this one, if, let's just look at this one. Um, so you only get this one to be true if both P and Q are true or both P and Q are false, right? That's just the way that you want to think about this, right? Um, we can read this as Lisa has her umbrella if and only if it is raining, right? So this means that if um, it is raining, then Lisa has her umbrella, and Lisa has her umbrella, then this statement is true. If it is raining and Lisa does not have her umbrella, then the whole statement is false. If it is not raining and Lisa has her umbrella, then it's false. If it is not raining and Lisa does not have her umbrella, then the statement is true, right? Um, uh, so this one you can follow natural language a little bit better than you can with the conditional. Um, so just be careful uh, with these symbols. Make sure that you are memorizing the truth tables and not the way that you read them off um, if you're pronouncing them out loud. All right, so this is the last of our uh, semantics of propositional logic. We're going to do some examples on in the next video um, so that we can play around with how these interact with each other.